Welcome back to the absolute most professional StarCraft 2. Allow me to introduce our first grand finalist, the Terran player in the red, the seven-time GSL champion. It is the man, the myth, the Maru. But on the other side, you couldn't find more difficult or more predictable competition with the rank one player in the world. The finisher, of course, it is Serral. A best of seven. Terran versus Zerg. Hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line. The IM Katowice Championship eluded both of these players. Last year, Maru with his heartbreaking loss in Oliveira's incredible run. Serral getting knocked out early. But this time around, neither of them have allowed any to stand in their way. This is an almost mythical matchup between the probably only two players you could have a conversation about the greatest of all time with. I, in my personal opinion, I think this match could solidify Cyril's position as clearly the greatest StarCraft II player of modern day and really ever. Whereas Maru has a chance to turn that narrative around, a narrative that has turned against him in the past year, maybe more than that. But he's never found the level of success outside of Korea that Cyril has enjoyed essentially everywhere else. So, if you enjoy the literal best StarCraft 2 and games that really we could ever ask for. It would be awesome if you enjoyed this channel and you could like and subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we... No, don't be clever about it. If we get one... 2,024 likes on this video, on this cast, on this grand final series, I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways, because I don't know what else I would do with my life. I don't know how we're going to follow this up. It's Maru versus Serral. It doesn't get any better. But thank you for watching. I hope you've had a good day so far. I hope this is about to make it just a little bit better. Starting things off on Hecate. Where I would say this is one of Maru's best chances, map-wise to, to uh, open things up. Hard lead is probably our best Terran versus Zerg map. But Serral is starting with Overlord speed, as well as some roaches. I, be, I believe these are Mac roaches here. He's building just enough to deal with the early aggression from the Hellions uh, of Maru. Kind of keep his options open, but not necessarily go for some sort of all-in. Though that Overlord speed is a little suspicious. In Terran versus Zerg, the reason you don't see too many all-ins from either side is because of the level of scouting both sides are able to get. Which, uh, like on, on Cyril's... Oh my god, he's doing a German taxi build. Alright, well, Cyril, with his overlords, always seems to get the information. And the Overseer coming in now. Whereas the Terran with the Reaper, as well as Hellions and Banshees, are always on your front doorstep looking to get the damage done, and thereby scouting. But Cyril has decided to actually open things up with something... Not exactly a cheese, but certainly something that needs to get damage done. And is looking to exploit the lack of early units here from Maru. Because Maru, as always, going three command center. There is a Banshee. But the Queens... Well, quicker than ever. They weren't... Ever since the Brood War, they haven't been able to fly. But the Overlords are helping out with that. The only way to bring Antir across. There is an Overseer. The Queens have arrived! Brenda, calm down. <clears throat> The, the Roach is out at the front, but Cyril opening things up strong, looking to batter down the door in game number one. The command center is the one holding it, which actually makes it kind of difficult for these uh, heftier units like the Queens and Ravagers to get around it. But the Roach Ravager busting through. The bunker is on the back line. Maru gives up on the idea of an orbital command and decides to move the command center out of the way. But the Queens and the Corrosive Bows are already doing a lot of damage. He's going to need to pull more SCVs off the line. Another wave of corrosive bow knocks out one of the bunkers immediately. And the Banshee's working through the Queen. A single transfuse. Stim is done. Corrosive bow across the board wipes out a bunch of the SCVs alongside the bunker. But he actually takes down the Overseer, which means that last Banshee is uncontested. 13 SCVs dead. The Queens are cleaned up. Those creep on the doorstep, but Maru will hold. Corrosive bow scattered across the board, but not able to chase down the Banshee. Maru's got to stay very careful with the Banshee, but that single Banshee is the only thing really between him 
and oblivion. Without that snipe on the overseer, if that banshee hadn't still uh, been on the field and able to drive the roach, I can't believe he has to scan and deal with creep at his doorstep. So he'll just dropping it on his lawn in game number one. And here's the thing, like I mentioned, this wasn't, he didn't need to win the game with that. Uh, queen gets the banshee. But he needed to keep, did he, did he kill the third command center? No but it certainly wasn't having a good time of it as still heavily damaged you know what they say that which doesn't kill you leaves you with a massive repair bill and a lot of emotional trauma hellions and reaper coming by but Cyril opened up the map his aggression tempered all right designed to keep maru at bay without committing to any sort of uh something that would really hurt his own economy look at the drone 70 to 48 workers. He killed SCVs and built drones behind. He's going to be left with just roaches. There's no real anti-air besides the queens who are, are not incompetent when it comes to taking out the medevacs, but they just can't chase them down as they go boosting around. And Cyril did lose those queens at the front, regrettably, as uh, obviously if you bring them to the front, they're unlikely to make it home unless the game is won. But Maru gonna try to keep the pressure on with the medevacs. He has to stay active, otherwise Cyril will essentially just control the entire map and crush him. So, even if it means... Well, he's losing kind of a surprising amount of marines to the Roach Ravager. Oh my god, Cyril's doing the Overlord Creep Drop. One of those kind of YouTube commenter slash Scarlet level strategies. Scarlet is the only other player I see use this um, at any sort of competent level. Where the Overlord Creep and the Queens, the tag team work... Oh, no. <laughs> Give me the Overlord, Karen. Quickly! I don't... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Hive Tech is already on the way. Cyril just smoothly going from that early pressure into overwhelming macro. While Maru, the trajectory is a bit more set. You have to build up that production. Usually about five. Going on eight barracks is about how many you can support on three bases. Maru's only on five for now, as he doesn't really have the SCV count past that. Getting plus two infantry weapons, plus one mech weapons, focused on those tanks. Much more effective than Widowmines against Roach Ravager. You need something to keep them at bay, and Widowmines are just not going to take out those huge groups of units. Whereas Serral is mixing in a lot more Zerglings and Banelings, as... For the same reasons Roach Ravager can be strong against things like mines, the Roaches are weak against the tanks as they get in their own way. All right, they get caught between a rock and a hard place on a little bridge, a tiny choke point, stub their toe on a tree or something, and uh, the siege tanks obliterate them. But between the Zerglings, the Banelings, and uh, Vipers with Blinding Cloud and Parasitic Bomb, the ability to whittle down the tank count, I'll... Oh my god. Now dance! <laughs> the queens. Oh, Cyril. Cyril on point right now. The detail. Oh my god. I. <laughs> now that's just rude. Effective, but rude. Like so many strategies, if you've ever played the latter. We're 10 minutes in. Cyril is maxed out. He's got Hive Tech kicking in. Ultralisk Cavern is done. Chitinous Plating is on the way in a Spire. Just to follow it up. Plus one mech weapons. About to complete for Maru, and he's going to need every bit of it. He yanks the tank into the Road Traveler. Blinding Cloud onto the ramp. There are two tanks on the back line. The Baneling struggling to break through. These tanks are taken out. Cyril pulls back after eliminating them. And overall, what are the losses? Lo oh my god, the Roaches. Over to the north side. He's trying to get rid of the roaches. But he's trying to do it in a way that is uh, relatively effective. And he does. He finds an opportunity. He kills another half dozen or, or so SCVs on top of the attack at the third. And frees up supply for four Ultralisks. Those Ultralisks are not necessarily to do the damage themselves. But they are the massive meat shields. You don't get a larger meat shield, really, uh, in the game. But... Something to draw attention and fire so the Lings and Banes can run and roll in and uh, wipe out the rest of the army. Maru already in trouble here. The Queens 
And their chauffeur, the overlord taxi, bringing them around, dropping the creep for them. I love it. One of my favorite little uh, strats that doesn't usually feel viable. But when Cyril does it... Cyril! I want to point out, at this point, uh, when we see Clem and, and Rainer, and even Maru, who's at 470 APM, Zerg is notorious for having a massive uh, actions per minute count. That's what I meant to say. But Cyril is actually relatively slow, because he embraces the idea of working smarter and not harder. And I think over the years, he's, he's become more and more efficient at that. Like, he's not doing perfect pinpoint micro. Um, but he's making sure every action is worth it. And there's no one better at it. The Widowmons, though, might be able to thin out some of the Banelings. Indeed they do, but the Ultras tank the brunt of it. The Widowmons, uh, discouraging the Banelings from any further activities. But he just crushes the base. And Maru is back down to three. And there's no reason for the Ultras not to continue. Viper taken out by the Viking. Widow Mines and Ghost gonna combine into some overwhelming firepower. And Cyril actually ends up losing a lot of that army. He refills it immediately. He always has that larva in the bank. And he's making his Spire great again. As something in the later game. Against Widow Mines and against tanks, Broodlords can be very effective choices. Against Ghosts and Vikings, not nearly as much. But having that option on the table, just getting towards Corruptors to be able to challenge both Vikings, um, just air units in general, but specifically Liberators is a common choice in the late game, and one Maru is making right now. The big risk at this stage for someone like Cyril, who's sitting on about two-thirds of the map, is throwing away so many units cost ineffectively, which he's already lost a lot more resources. So throwing away so many units that you actually run out of money. A war of attrition that is quite difficult to win for Zerg on an even economy. Thankfully, Cyril financially may be able to ruin Maru overall. Four bases is not going to be enough to compete with the seven or eight of Cyril, even if the Widowmines get massive connections. The Venn diagram of freedom set up there. The Liberators will backstop the back line. Infestors in production. Burrow has been done for quite a while. Both flavors of cloak done now for the Terrans. I've always been amused they have the same icon. The lazy Terrans there. Surprisingly uh, inattentive. But Ghost Cloak is done. Ghost in production. Maru is about as turtled up as you could be. Right now, go into the Maru cam. The map is dark and full of Zerg. That is kind of terrifying right there. As, yeah, good luck. The entire map, you move out for essentially anywhere, and there's creep. You know that Sarah will see you, and he will be moving to kill you, or at least take advantage of that position. All right, splitting those Zerglings early on. The ghosts on the back line. No infestors to deal with. Good choke point with the command center. The ghosts out in the fray. Ultra's trying to break through. Had a tough time at it. But the Banelings are just rolling all the way in towards the natural. Cyril making sure they get as much value as possible. Not just A moving, but instead actually right clicking. Move commanding the Banelings pass because whether or not they attack at full HP or they're killed in the process, they have the same effect. Though the ghosts come out and are able to snipe out the retreating ultras and mo most of the rest of the units. Cyril is nearly back at two. Cyril is back at 200 supply. Maru, ever since that first push, and we see the Cyril Festers here, who always seem to find an opportunity. They always find a spot. They're scouts and potentially game winning spellcasters as without fungal growth in order to interrupt snipes and just hold down units in general leading the charge drags out the widow mines cleans up the rest maru is forced back to defend and that oh that infester is inside maru but the scan the scan actually spots it he kind of suspected it there and that means the ghosts will go untouched for much of this fight. But the Banelings are rolling in. The Zerglings complimenting them. But 
Without the infester, Cyril not able to break through. He does find one of the command centers. Make no mistake here. Let's not pretend like this isn't a massive advantage for Cyril. He has the economic lead. He has the supply lead. He has the upgrade lead. Plus three melee, plus three carapace completed, and plus two ranged attack for... Really, that only benefits, like, uh, uh, queens and... Are there even any roaches left? One roach and three roaches have survived this. But more ultras on the way. Maru does have a lot of army supply. 100 of it, but Cyril hits the base before it's even a planetary to the north. Kills a dozen more SCVs. Gonna take out the command center. The ghost ball. It's becoming almost all in here from Maru. His army is still intact, but his economy is gutted. The income, well, you can tell what he dropped mules. <laughs> Cyril has maintained the income lead for a full 10 minutes, and this game hasn't gone on too much longer than that. Maru has to come back to clean up the Zerglings. But the Zerglings, I'm sure, will be burrowing, or at least, eh, he doesn't burrow in the main. Cyril is maxed out again. Cyril is inevitable. The inexorable march of the Ultras, the Zerglings, the Banelings. There's got to, there's always another investor. Not literally in this case. He actually only has three in production, none on the field. Maru has 107 to 118 army supply, which is very, it's competitive. But here comes Cyril from the north side. Maru not quite set up to deal with this. The ghosts, a bunch of them. I didn't see them, but they definitely died. And Maru just gets rolled in game one. As Cyril leans on him and crushes him under the weight of the Ultras, he takes the entire map and, well, if there was a textbook, Cyril would certainly be the one writing it. That is about as decisive as it's going to get, I think. Maru not crumbling under Cyril's both direct and multi-pronged attacks. But he just couldn't get anywhere. He couldn't move out of his base. He tried some drops for a little bit, but overall, it was all Cyril all the time. And I have no idea how you switch that up. But I would love to say, but, but there were some redeeming qualities. But Cyril, in his own words, what he does is pretty standard business. And as I've mentioned before, it's a, a little bit, um, it's a, a, a little bit condescending from the CEO, the founder, and essentially the chief engineer of said business to just say, I just play like pretty standard business. But at the same time, there's no real, that game had everything from Sarah. Figuratively, obviously not every single unit, but he he did the early pressure. He did some cheeky creep strats. He did the the roach transition into the late game, and it seemed like there was no point where Maru had any opportunities. It's very hard to point out exactly where and when Maru could have done something differently. It's just these all these little details add up over time. And that's what I think makes Cyril feel so... It's just, it's like a Wayne Gretzky skit. Like, no other Zerks, not even the man himself, Dark, has this effect. I don't know, we're on Radisson Station, which is a notorious late game map because you have these pocket bases, you have mineral wall and just a rock wall here. So that makes it almost impossible for Zerg to kind of conventionally attack from multi-prong angles. Uh, another Overlord... Wow. Cyril opting for Overlord Speed. Two games in a row. This one is not for early... It was a later Overlord Speed, intentionally for the Queens. And, and for chauffeuring them in the previous match. But this time around, it is just scouting. It is a map that you really do want to know if Maru already has a third command center by the time he's even thinking about building a starport. And indeed he does. He's going to get into the main. Cyril knows all. If he has the information, he'll compute it and he'll deal with it. 
It's going to be cyclones as the follow up here. Sarah will scout the reactor factory, but that doesn't necessarily give away the cyclones as they can be built off reactors once again, as they've been able to for about a third of their competitive careers. But another overlord slime by sees double engineering bay, which is the rest of the giveaway. It doesn't matter too much. Ooh. The Hellions run by. Bit of a gamble. Gets three drones, which is something. Cyril's gonna... I think he already mined out the location. Though. So, in order to spread creep past the uh, rock wall over here, you actually have to put a creep tumor exactly in... Because this is actually too much space for the creep tumors. So you have to have a little bit of an extra space so it'll spread far enough to get the creep tumor over the top. Ah, yes, creep mechanics. One one on the way. Four barracks. Well, production coming up. Serral, yeah, it's going to be a macro game. Has no real opportunity. Here's the closest thing to an opportunity, which is a couple Cyclones with the Hellions. The Cyclones, pretty solid against the Queens. Definitely better than Hellions. I'd take it about with that auto attack fire. Trying to work on the creep, but eh, mixed results. Yeah, Cyclones can poke and prod at the Queens. Creep begins. The Zerglings look for the wraparound. And... Splits off some more. They're not so... The Cyclones are, are pretty good against larger targets with that lock-on ability, but... Well... They're also okay against the Zerglings, but they get caught there. Yeah, dancing back and forth. There's an Overlord. And the bones of an o I don't think... I don't think Overlords have... Fingers. So, I don't know. It's a weird look. Anyways, moving on. Cyclone getting hunted down. We'll find them. Eventually, the Zerglings will finish it off. 1-1 one, one done. Medivac's on the way. So, no sort of mech or any crazy uh, shift from your, your more standard Terran game plan of... Marines and medevacs and then whatever else you want to fill in past that Maru starting it off and just he's already at 65 SCVs. Cyril is at 80 drones <laughs> At six minutes and 40 seconds And I think he's been there for a little while so it might have been like six minutes, which is just Well, that's the number. Is he doing baneling drops? What year is it? I mean They can still work um, and this looks like uh, Maru already has anticipated this. He's got some turrets out there. There really isn't any other way. I guess mutas, but mutas are a bit of a liability in and of themselves, unfortunately. We don't see too many of them nowadays. But both sides are dropping. The Zerglings move to intercept and will politely yet firmly ask the Metavags to leave. The Overlord poking in. Gonna try to get a Bane drop off. So far, the turrets... I, I believe the Overlord pulled back before the turrets had vision, as air units have slightly more vision um, from being in the air than, than things on the ground. Oh, but Maru, he knows what's in there. Now, there doesn't necessarily have to be anything in there. Obviously, he's revealed it now. But the Bane links, a lot of time lost here. From mining as oh the bay legs finish speed and the SCVs on the run the Marines working through them a surprising amount of danger posed by just these three bay legs that are just rolling through <laughs> six SCVs dead and a ton of mining time lost oh my god that was the most effective bane drop I've seen in quite a while and possibly the only bane drop I've seen in quite a while oh widow mine Cyril scrambles still ends up eating a big hit. I don't think that's going to be a, a massive uh, pause in Maru's economy, though, as he's at 82 SCVs. 
He's keeping the pressure on with drops a lot more successfully than last game. Gutting down even more drones. A hive is on the way. Cyril, this is superficial damage for now. It is, but Maru is being a lot more successful at keeping the army off his back. And keeping the army on Cyril's side of the map. That's half the battle. The other half is the actual battle. But... Uh, which Maru seems intent on persecuting now. As he's finished up 2-2, Cyril's not too far behind an upgrade. So Maru's not going to have an upgrade advantage. Unfortunate. Plating is on the way. That mech plating. He's building a bunch of Widow Mines. He's up against the Zergling, Baneling composition, which Widow Mines much more uh, potential against than Roach Ravager of last game. And the sheer size of the map means that tanks are, are just harder to make work. I'm out of axe. Driven out yet again, but tying up a few dozen Zerglings at the back of the base. We'll get more and more opportunity. A Zergling drop. I love Cyril just adding in. It's a little detail. Such a small detail. But those details add up. Oh, Widow Mine drop. Drilling Paws done. <laughs> Not fighting the drones, but drawing a lot of attention and killing a bunch of Zerglings. Meanwhile, the attack over to the right flank. The Ling Bane chasing down Marine Marauder, trying to get the damage done. Hydra's cutting off the rest. Hydra's have much... Uh, a much better opportunity to take out a critical mass of marauders and mines especially. They have that range DPS that zerglings and, and to an extent banelings can't really claim, obviously. So Cyril has opted for the hydras. No lurker den at the moment. No ultralisk cavern. He does have a spire on the way. Uh, which is more than likely for... Well, Broodlords can be very good against Widowmons, but I think this is just Serral. Like, he has money in the bank. He's maxed out. Maru has 100 SCVs, which is... um. Serral's about to help him out with that, I think. That's actually too many. Especially for Terra, who wants to replace as many SCVs as possible with automation. That's why he's... They're taking our jobs. All right, our good blue mineral jobs. We've been working since 1998 on these... <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Widow Mine, quite effective. Cyril will replace all of that immediately. It doesn't seem like he drops below 200 supply very often. At least not far. He's starting to build up a bank of his own. But Maru is getting that all important fifth base. This is the most I important stage of the game so far. Something he wasn't able to do. Oh. The minimalist Widow Mine defense, which is such a risky maneuver, but the Banelings rolling in, and the Widow Mines helping with the Zerglings to do terrible, terrible damage to the Marines. But the Bio Ball will hold strong enough, and Maru will push him back. But at the same time, there is a Nidus inside the main base. A few ghosts out on the field, Zerglings trickling out. Widow Mine will damage the ghosts as well. A burrowed infester. Maru actually scrambling back off the map right now, giving Cyril a huge opportunity to set up for another attack. Even though the first one didn't do very much damage, the follow-up has been... Eh, well, Maru hasn't been able to put himself out there. He hasn't gotten back out on the map at all. So that means Cyril's able to refill, build a bunch more Banelings. He does have to be a little careful because of that war of attrition, like I was talking about in the previous game. And this time around, Maru has not been limited to just three, four bases. He's somewhat competitive with Cyril, who obviously has more, but not so much more. Uh, it gives him a decisive economic advantage, as Maru actually has more minerals in the bank. The Infester, though, it pops up, it throws out the fungal, but wait, he still has it. It survived, and the army just crumbles. Oh, no. Loses 30, 40 supply right there. Cyril. Actually, about an even trade. 60 Zerglings died. Uh, Maru killing some of his own units as well. But the Infester lived. How? I don't... And he puts it off to the side, waits till the units are tied up, pops up, holds them down, knocks them out, melts the faces off the Marines and Marauders with the Banelings. The Ghosts will retreat powerfully to the back and try to fire off some snipes. But Cyril with another decisive moment with those infestors, making every YouTube commenter and Twitch chatter wonder why a raven is not in production.
But at the end of the day, Serral's investor usage isn't so much reliant. Oh my, he's just, there's just not enough units. I think Maru, will he stay? He should stabilize. Serral's positioning on the investor is not like Maru is low on scans either. But Serral waits until the army has engaged and units are attacking the Lings and Banes. Notice how he moves those investors. Just barely off to the side, a little out of range. He's using him for vision as well. God. It's one of those just Serral things. Players like Dark and Rainer will try it, but only Serral is able to consistently pull it off. He just... The efficiency. Oh my god. The mortician's assistant of Zerg players. Or accountant, rather, I think is more accurate. The infester is scanned. This base, nope. <laughs> this base to the top left is vulnerable. Another scan, the infester. Gonna keep the units distracted. Meanwhile, Cyril overrunning the north side. 17 SCVs down. Maru still has 78. So that's not a big concern. But Maru is actively, well, one, he's building a turret wall. The TPM, the turrets per minute, a Bronze League Heroes slash most pro gamers statistic. Um, and only the highest level games understand turrets are this good. Well, the Widow Mine actually gets dragged out. The Banelings rolling in. The Ghost will cloak. There is detection over the top, but the Ghost will tank most of the Baneling damage. Parasitic Bob will force some of the Metavax to be quarantined away and obliterate it off to the side while Cyril takes the rest of the map. That Infester, the scan a bit off the mark, but, well, he's going to kill some of the Ghosts. Targets a couple, but the Ghosts return fire. And some of the reinforcements are able to take down the Hydras on the way out. But Cyril still has money in the bank. Maru is struggling to put 200 supply on the field. How did that Infester survive? <laughs> Infestors have as much HP as Widow Mines, for reference. But Cyril just seems a 90 HP apiece. But he pops up the Fuggle, throws it out, gets him back underground. And those are the little details. Lurkers and Banelings morphing alongside Chitinous Plating as Maru has survived. And he hasn't taken anything resembling critical damage, though a Nidus at the back line may uh, change that equation a bit. The Liberators holding that high ground. Well, not really high ground, but the northern base. Going to make it very difficult. Another Liberator going to hold the southern one. This one away from Cyril's drones be forced to pull back. Another Nidus inside. <laughs> There's a little bit of space in between all those turrets to pop out the Nidus. And Maru is not dealing with it very quickly here. There could be lurkers inside there. Nope, just Zerglings. Burrow Zerglings immediately, which is a bit optimistic, but another Liberator is sieging up. I believe he does have advanced ballistics, making it almost impossible for those queens to kill it. And the Vipers... Hydra Ling Bane coming by. Widow Mines getting a lot of damage. Parasitic Bob. Bane Ling's obliterated by the Widow Mines. And some more rolling through, but the Liberator sieging up. Uh, unleashing a torrent of liberation in the ground army. The Queens will gather to strongly protest the existence of the Liberator in the bottom right corner, and it looks like they were successful for now. There are nine Corruptors on the way. This is faster. I believe they're... Oh my god. He's watching. Time to switch to Terran, Cyril. Neural Parasite and SCV 12 times. He just has, in fact, like, they're... <laughs> Where are they? Oh, my God. He's got an algorithm, okay? He just randomizes infester positionings. No, it's more impressive. He's, he's mapped it out. He's got them like uh, underground overlords. Underlords. The Corruptors will directly deal with the Liberators, and Maru will no longer have free reign over these mineral lines. Now another factor to deal with. In the back of that top left base, the Lurkers are popping out. A couple Marauders are not going to be enough, but oh my god, there's 19 ghosts on the field. That is a potential critical mass that's almost impossible to beat. He needs the Fungals. It is essentially required, but... The Lurkers will cross-hatch this planetary. And then, by the time the Liberators siege up, they'll scamper back into the escape Nidus and get away with it. 
But Maru has money in the bank. Oh my god, there's an infester there. I didn't even see it. <laughs> uh, one, another infester spotted, taken out. But they're everywhere. On both sides building up banks. Cyril has slowed down on the attacks. Is he mining? Well, he's mining from the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock base. He does... Oh my god, you gotta scan. You gotta check your corners. Doors and corners. That's where they get you. And guess what, Maru? The veilings are rolling in. And half the ghosts are dead before the fight even starts. The Ultra is drawing plenty of attention. The Corruptor is wiping out the Liberators behind. And the rest of the Baylings will actually survive to fight another day. Which is a weird thing for the Baylings to be doing in general. But no reason to waste them on ghosts that aren't going to die. Does Maru have Caduceus Reactor? He doesn't actually have the Medivac Energy Regen upgrade. Yes, the twice as much regen makes those medevacs that much more effective. And most importantly, gets you more value out of less supply, which is sometimes the most important factor, especially when you want to build six liberators at a time. How is there an infester under here? He pops it out. He throws it up. The fungal, the banelings, the terrible, terrible damage being dealt to the ghosts. The wombo combo once again. A widow mine. Got to hit. Oh my god, he killed the ghost with the widow mine, or at least was severely helped with it. And again, Maru is driven back. His supply plummets. Okay, 160 isn't that bad, but. Meanwhile, the lurkers broke through and are slicing every piece of that planetary again, though I don't think they have quite the raid. Oh my god. An arc of, of lurkers here. Meanwhile. The freedom has arrived as Maru sieges up Liberators to match and will completely drive Cyril out of this base, shoving him away with the cannons of the Liberators. And now Cyril will retreat once again, but Maru's bank is drained, whereas Cyril has 5k, 2k in the bank. Now, he hasn't been able to find that game-winning fight, and you have to be... While it might look like it's trending towards Cyril here. Cyril's only going to have one more base of mining at the current rate. Which sounds like a lot, but it's already getting less and less cost effective. It's harder and harder to fight into this ghost liberator. Oh my. He gets some of the liberators, but the widow mines, as well as a missile turret, doing plenty of damage themselves. Oh, uh, I have an infester with the turret. Ah! They're so squishy. The ghosts will snipe out the lurkers that were, um, lurking. The liberators pincushioning drones from off, uh, almost off camera. And things slow down a bit yet again. A volley of scans from Maru, literally across the board. We'll spot some of the infestors moving. And, oh, oh my god. Lines up. He makes sure that infester is dead. A dozen ghosts lining up their shots. So that way they don't know which one gets the credit. They'll brag about it too much. Believe it or not, uh, lore accurately, ghosts are a bit egotistical. They're so egotistical. StarCraft Ghosts got canceled. Oh my God. <sighs> Again, Cyril hits the base to the top left, but if he loses two Ultras to kill that base, technically, Cyril has lost more resources than it costs to even build a planetary. But, uh, Oh my, the infestors. Maru has how many orbital commands? Seven. So not enough to scan the entire map constantly. And we've been in enough of these games. It takes five orbital commands to always have a scan. If you're using it when the first one runs out. So obviously you want more than that. As sometimes you want more than one scan. And mules are pretty useful at this stage of the game, especially as the SCV count runs low, one way or another. Uh, 16 more dead, as Cyril is unwilling to give up on this position. Maru is trying to take the center base, the gold base, which 
doesn't actually have more resources. It's just you mine them more quickly. So having only six patches means there's actually less resources here. But of course, mining them more efficiently is important. Cyril has 10,000 minerals in the bank, but only 2,600 gas. He's lost thir only 2,000 more minerals so far. He's mined six. Well, you can see it in the total there. Uh, 600 zerglings, and he'll do it again. That's actually a bit low. <laughs> I guess Baylings are also zerglings um, in their final form. Gets the planetary, the ghosts. Oh, this is a bit awkward. Kills one. Oh, the ghost a little bit off center. There's no infestors nearby, I don't think. And this choke point. Yeah, the ghost just running past. Um, the TP of the turret count is so damn high. Maru doesn't actually have high sec auto tracking, which is a weird thing to point out as a potential mistake. But in this case, I think having turret range would indeed be helpful. And that fight was actually so... At least a Pyrrhic victory for Maru. And will allow him to take out Cyril's base to the south. And potentially turn it into a Maru base. As Cyril is... He's been in this situation before. He's faced Clem enough times to understand that this bank is not inexhaustible. None of these fights have gone so well for Cyril that he could just afford to take them again and again. So he's being careful with it. We'll see if it's necessary or if it pays off by the end. Because he could morph 100 Banelands and just try to roll through. And that could be the game winning move. But it could also be the way he loses his entire bank, especially the gas. I gotta keep pointing out the gas, because the only things you can build with just minerals as Zerg are overlords, queens, drones, and Zerglings. And those might all sound good, but against Mass Ghost Liberator Widowmine, I don't think any of those are going to be particularly effective. He requires the gas to really make this composition viable at all. So that is the number we need to keep looking at. Here come more Ultras and Banelings to the north. That's so many Banelings. How many Banelings? He's got 44 of them. I think they're all right there. Again, how many times has this base been... Well, not really traded hands, but how many times has Cyril slapped it out of Maru's hands? Like seven, eight at this point? But Maru keeps coming back and taking it again. Caduceus Reactor, I, I wonder if Maru just went through and said, which upgrades have I not built yet? And Caduceus Reactor is one of them. High sec auto tracking, finally done. Bronze League Heroes, rejoice. Oh, widow my. Took Maru a bit long. Oh, those are... Maru's actually finally taking a uh, uh, Cyril for the first time, is claiming that top left base. As Maru has focused more of his efforts to the south. The ghosts line up the shots, but a fungal will help chew through some of them. Massive widow mine hit through the choke point, though. And that means Cyril left without enough banelings, I think, to close in. Still, so many SCVs going down. He's down to 27, but that won't necessarily hurt his mining too much, as with eight orbital commands, Cyril just refills 86 more Zerglings. Technically goes over 200 supply yeah, with a uh, hatchery trick there, but Maru quickly knocks him back under. There are 24 turrets on the field, creating just a tower defense, a turret defense maze here. But the Corruptors are going to ignore them. The Zerglings are going to rip them to shreds, I say. And get on top of that planetary fortress. The Ghosts are joining the fray. And actually take out all the Banelings. But the planetary's dead. Another command center nearby. We'll fill it in. Command center's relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things compared to the actual cost of these armies. But we're starting to get to that point where we have to start counting mineral patches. Which is always... A bit of an odd situation. Cyril, he's lost now 10,000 more minerals, but he has mined 15k more, so you could do the math or you could just look at the bank. 
6600 2300 the mineral bank has dwindled whereas the bank of maru has been strapped for cash for quite a while now Ah, uh, the corruptors is law and, and this is i think Cyril's end game he's slowly but surely whittling down the most difficult unit to deal with no not the ghosts actually the liberators the liberators are something that almost always get value if you don't have corruptors Ooh, Fester just dies so having those corruptors means you can keep vipers uh, well at least vipers can find more value and eventually you can wipe out medevacs and liberators and also you always have that option for a brood lord switch Fester's definitely in range of the turret Cyril has plus three plus two Four in the air and three three on the ground. So a potential broodlord switch. He doesn't have that much money. Or or gas rather. For it. So if he goes for it, that has to be like a checkmate sort of move. As broodlords are not nearly the fearsome, potentially game winning siege creatures they once were. A lot more like a siege tank sort of unit. Where they can be used to push through a position if you don't have quite enough anti air. But the Broodlings, uh, for those who don't know, were nerfed significantly. They have less duration and significantly less HP. Only takes two ghost hits to kill them. Like three from a Marine. Only 20 HP. So it's more about using them to dislodge a position. But I do think that's where we're going. As what else is left to Cyril but a Brood? Like, he's not breaking Maru. I guess he could go for another big attack. The Queens and the Nidus. They keep dueling over this base. Maru can't seem to max out. If the ghosts die, the game just ends, so... There's also that, but an EMP lands on the Vipers. And the turrets are certainly helpful as well. The ghost cloak, as the Overseer is forced away, and he finishes off the Ultras. These fights are going worse and worse for Cyril. Maru takes the overwhelming advantage in that one. And killing a lot of valuable Vespine gas units. Cyril's bank has been consistently dwindling. The income has been exclusively in Cyril's favor. But yeah, we're counting mineral patches now. That base to the south and the center, Nidus's around the board, but Nidus's cost money as well. Hmm. Oh my god. Cyril with the creep. Ghost comes up. Nidus in the main for dramatic effect. There's not even anything in it. I think he knows there's an investor here. I mean, what are you going to do with it? Is there a neural parasite? There is. He could EMP the ghosts. With the ghosts. Which is one of the best counters to ghosts. Or, of course, he brings in the army. Oh, that investor pops up, but there was nothing to tank the shots, and he just dies before he can fungle. Still, though, the Zerglings and Banelings, well, they overrun a lot of the Marines, but the ghosts are like, see, <laughs> and cloak. Oh, they don't care about them. Oh, the Widow Mines kill another chunk of Zerglings. And that bank continues to dwindle. Maru is down to 140 supply. But again, the army supplies. 12 more Corruptors on the way. A Queens. Will we get... Well... Mar uh, Cyril has been pretty uh, adamant about... Trading away Zerglings here. He's lost about three, four hundred more Zerglings in the last five, six minutes. As well, that's where most of the minerals went. Hmm. Oh, the, the Widow Mines. Finding good connections. He needs to thin out the Zerglings so the ghosts can pretend. Where are the ghosts? I assume they're coming. How many Corruptors? 23 Corruptors. That's actually too many Corruptors. Most of the largest chunk of Cyril's army is in Corruptors, which does not pay off. I think it's time. Uh, he's actually leaned so far into Corruptors, he almost has to go Broodlords now. Otherwise, he can't fight the ground army. Yeah. Yeah, he had no ground army left. The Ultra, like four Ultras and 30 Zerglings are not going to beat this. The Bio Ball is rolling through. Maru scanned the Broods. He knows it's coming. 
Yeah, uh, he scanned the edge. Infester Broodlord. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Not nearly as strong as it once was, but it is a tool. And uh, it seems like the last tool that Cyril and his bank is gone. Maru has almost drawn even the supply. He's brought it back this far. But Cyril's end game has begun. The Brood Lords to rule them all. Oh, the Lord of the Broods. The Ultras and Banelings are waiting. There is no direct anti-air really outside of the Ghost Snipes. So with the Infestors, if well controlled, which is not a big if with, with Cyril, but the Infestors with Fungal to interrupt the Snipes, but he loses two of them. Maru building Vikings now, which at plus two, plus three, these are fully upgraded, fully operational Broodlords. Snipes doesn't quite get the fungal in time, takes out one, but able to return fire. One goes down, Vikings show up. Still plenty of Corruptors on the field. As Cyril has leaned so heavily into this army composition, he still has the Corruptors. The Widow Mines are now a liability. Yeah, and they could, they will trigger on top of the Terran army. That's another big benefit of the Broods, is essentially negating the Widow Mines or, or turning them against the Terrans in a fight. Ooh, these ones will connect though. Big hits onto the Corruptors. Maru is mining for that top left base, which has changed hands time and time again. Cyril looking to reclaim it. The Broodlings, so many of them, but easily gunned down. They only last so long. Not too many Banelings left. The Fungal, more Snipes, trying to line up on everything they can get. Uh, everything is a good target at this point. Another Fungal comes through. Banelings rolling in. The Viper in the front line here. Not getting any oh, Parasitic Bomb onto the Metavax. And the Ghost, many of them will survive underneath. There's still detection. Is there even a Fungal? Maybe one. There's not that much energy left. He saves the Ghost. And what's left? Cyril maintains <gasps> a widow mine kills an infester on the way uh, uh, across. There's only seven ghosts. There's seven brood lords. How many overseers? Five of them. Cyril has enough gas, but he doesn't actually have any minerals. The income not looking great for either side, but Cyril still. Um, has some. Five. Vikings at a time. That is what Cyril is spending the rest of his money on, are those Vikings. He's got a long distance mine with mules. Why not? Gonna try to get the last minerals on the map. We're actually entirely out. There's... How much has been mined? Cyril has managed to mine 88,000. I think we may figure out how many minerals are on an entire map in StarCraft II. The answer is around 150,000. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depending on how many bases. I think this will even out to about 160k. And we have lost so far. About 120 of that. The armies... Well, remember, the rest is invested in buildings and the armies. And that's all that's left. The scans, he will know what he's dealing with. Yes, the wars have been fought with hundreds, thousands of units. Over 1,000 Zerglings. 13 Ultras. But at the end of the day, we don't fight to see who wins. We just fight to see who's left. And it took this much for Maru to build a Raven. All right, guys. <laughs> It took losing everything. Well, I think he's just trying to figure out what else he can build that's going to be valuable to just have like one or two of. And a raven does fall under that category. How many corruptors are left? Only six. How many vikings? Vikings can trade with corrupt. It really depends on the spell. It depends on the snipes. Depends on the fungals. Parasitic. Uh, is there a viper? <gasps> no vipers. No vipers is huge in this fight. There's a single Liberator. He's building one more. Spore Crawler is coming in. We're fighting over here, partially out of a uh, matter of principle. Are we looking at the mineral walls here, which are technically the last minerals? 800 minerals. There's 1,200 minerals left here, which is a, a scan. EMP on the front line. The fungals not quite coming through. The medevacs are caught. Even repairing them is costly. Hmm. 
If... If he catches Cyril without detection, the Snipes or the Vikings can win this. But... It, we've soft locked the game. Like, there is a non zero chance of a draw right now. A situation where Cyril is left with no anti air, but if Maru's only left with, say, liberators, he can't kill buildings. So I'm just putting that out there. Another brood lord. Mules are mining. Like, even if they can't bring it home. Oh my god, he's fungling mules. Even if he can't bring it home, if he mines any of the minerals, it's still grabbing them away. It's not it's not about whether I get the minerals, says Maru. It's about whether you don't. But Cyril ugh, the infestors are gaining energy. Obviously vulnerable to EMP, but I think Maru is just. Ah. Uh, I don't know, Kev. Can't believe we're doing this again. I think Maru's fighting for a draw now. Maru's given up. Like, not necessarily given up, but... He wants Cyril to come kill him. Which is the best chance he has of taking a winning fight is using his existing infrastructure and trying to catch Cyril in a bad position. Which, you know, might be the play. Cyril's mining the last minerals on the map. Besides the mineral... Oh, Maru. Hell, it's a bout. I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. <sighs> he scans, he sees the mining, he sees the army, he sees the infester count, the broodlord count. He's got seven ghosts and eight vikings. It's not enough. It isn't enough, not against Cyril. Some other players, even Dark, might might get EMP'd. They might get caught without detection. But you can see Maru just staring at it. Oh, he sees the Vipers with full The Vipers did it. Cyril managed to remake Vipers and Maru in the a game that last longer lasted longer than most series. I don't... Wow. So, Cyril. I, I almost forgot where we were and what we were doing. 2-0 so far for Cyril. Oh, that is an absolute... Again, Cyril battering at the gates for the entire game. And again, Cyril breaks through. But this time, I think more emotionally than uh physically as maru taps out without a final fight he just gives it up so we gotta reset i hope maru takes a break after that one um i know players are allowed to break especially after two games i believe uh or really any time but it's supposed to be after two uh, going into game three all right so this is the best map for tvz um, I don't know about statistically, but this is the map I've seen Cyril lose the most to Terranza. So this is Maru's best chance to turn it around. Obviously, going down 0-3 to Cyril would not be ideal. 0-2 would also be... Just in general. 
You're so close. But at the same time. <sighs> Cyril just looks inevitable. He's playing so well. He's been the best player in the world, or at least competitive for it. For He won in 2018. He won two years ago. And he's looking at it again. Maru had his chance. Cyril robbed himself, in my opinion, and I am Katowice last year, in tapping out early against Ragnarok, now Shin. But it seems he shored up that ZVZ. I want to change gears for a moment. I think Maru needs to change gears. I'm going to change gears. So, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, by the way, I, I want to thank you. I've been thinking of ideas... We just reached 200,000 subscribers here on the YouTubes, which um, is ridiculous. I've been casting, well, this last year, two, well, since essentially the beginning of 2023, I've really made an extra focus. We gained, uh, I was at about 160 or so, maybe 165 at the beginning of last year. So this has been my best year on YouTube. I hope... Um, you've enjoyed it i hope it's made your days progressively even better i do plan to continue showing you good games for the fans great games the best games and uh well sarah will probably be featured very often then it seems but thank you for watching i am thinking about what to do for like a 200,000 subscriber special outside of you know like casting sarah versus maru but i can't really take credit for that uh, and I hope you enjoy. If you got ideas, let me know. Um, but either way, thank you for watching. Roach Warren. For Sarah. 30, 33 drones. Getting another two gases. Which is, um, pretty sus. The Zerglings get in, see no tech lab on the starport. Uh-oh. Oh. With no tech lab on the starport, will Cyril just go for a roach Ellen? As, without a banshee, that could be absolutely devastating. Especially if he's able to zone out the Hellions enough. He's building ten more lings and four roaches. And remember, he has those extra gases at the natural, so that could easily be for Ravagers. And there's no lair, no evolution chamber, no baneling nest. Ravager Ling against 3cc, no banshee. Hmm. A liberator does not help very much, if at all, against the Ravagers. It's more of a liability. And more importantly, the best counter to Ravagers at first is knowing it's coming. And right now, Maru has eight Hellions. And Cyril has evaded their attack path. He's gone over to the side. He sees the roaches now. Now he knows. Gonna try to get on top of those ro Does a surprisingly good job. Might be able to kill one. Might see some Ravager morphs as well. There we go. Actually, a little supply blocked from the Viking. But four Ravagers are on the way. It only takes three to take out that Liberator. And he can't move very fast, if at all. Yeah, Maru gonna back it off. Multiple bunkers. In production. Three <laughs> bunkers. He's taking this very seriously. But he may have taken too much time to figure it out. There's really not anything to put in the bunkers. There's only two four marines. He only has four marines. Down go the depots. Supply block for Maru. Gonna try to repair bunker number one. But so many ravagers. I think that's almost enough to one-shot the bunkers. So close on that one. Gets one pink cushioned by the Liberator. But that Zergling count is so damn high. He comes in. Fires at the Liberator. Doesn't waste too many shots. The rest of the shots go to the bunkers. Gonna hit the SCVs as well. Cyril is breaking through. He's breaking into the buildings. And now the SCVs are forced to run away from the bunker. He kills the Viking with collateral damage. The siege tag siege is up. But he's firing at units at point blank range. His SCVs are vulnerable. Cyril behind this is building more drones. He's decided with that siege tank, maybe he's not going to be able to end it here. But the engineering base in one of the safest locations, usually until Cyril clears out the natural. 
He goes for the engineering bay. Denies plus one armor. The Zergling's getting on top of everything. And even though Cyril's macroing behind, his micro is still on point. 32 SCVs dead. The siege tank is dead. The Marines are dead. And Maru has nothing to follow this up. He scans the... Uh, that's a GG scan. He scans the other side of the map. He saw that there were drones. Uh, I believe he scanned and saw drones popping out while he's busy losing SCVs. Uh, which is just... Just confirming, like, is it time? It's time. That he has to tap it out. God. And just like that, Cyril is up three to zero. Unstoppable. I am unbelievably pressed to see Maru turning this around. A game? Possibly. The series? The Wayne Gretzky. I don't know if that... Make your references, but... Cyril is such a statistical outlier... That it feels like he shouldn't even be included... As Zerg. But instead... Just another category that includes only Cyril. But can he keep it together? Cyril isn't really... He doesn't really choke. Sometimes he gets in his own head, but... I've never seen him just start playing like a different and much worse person. Even when he loop. Oh my god. Maru. Down. 3 to 0. In the I Am Katowice 2024 Championships on Match Point. Falls back to the most classic Maru strategy. <laughs> Proxy of Barracks. Here on Alkyone, oh my god. Cyril, pretty standard business. <sighs> god. I love that, like, Maru gets a little predictable. 3cc into Hellion, he gets greedier as the series goes on. And this time, Cyril committed to the... Okay, that SCV. Cyril saw that. Where did that SCV come from? There's no way he did... There's no reason. He never saw an SCV on his side of the map. Where did the SCV come from? He knows. He knows. He's building more Zerglings than you'd usually see. Usually four is the number, but he's getting... Yeah, Zergling speed. Not even bothering with going for a third. Instead, just Zerglings. So he doesn't need to see the barracks to know the likelihood of it. And unfortunately, though, the, the Overlord not quite in position. He's actually going to lose a drone. Great micro from Maru. Oh. <laughs> Blocks it with the spore. Gets another drone. So far, the damage is real. You can't. Oh, no. No. Get off my creep. <clears throat> Queen able to get a kill on the Reaper. And that, I think, uh, almost more than makes up for losing a couple drones. Especially since Maru is so... And t two command centers behind. He's committed. Well, he committed to four Reapers. Only three made it. Zergling speed is still about 20 seconds out. Which does... Oh, he loses another one. That SCV gave it away. I don't know why Maru. That's a amateurish mistake to to send it back home in such an obvious path. Your Cyril's not going to miss details like that. And it's because that SCV came home at that time that he built enough extra Zerglings to minimize the damage. Now he's getting double factory behind. Which going for probably the Hell Clone play. I don't know if he'll go mech outright. Yeah, that bar <laughs> the barracks of the Overlord. Hmm. What you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, he figured it out a while ago. Oh, no. 
I mean, oh no or oh yes, but Maru is going for the mass mech here. I don't think this is going to be your turtling siege tanks, but we did see just recently Maru take Serral to the brink with mech. Yeah, Masters got to see him not too many weeks ago. Serral again ended up winning that absolutely ridiculous game, which was only topped, I think, by game two of this series so far. But it was incredibly close, and I think really what happened was Maru didn't respect the investors. He didn't, and, and that was a game where I could have I could have been the one in the YouTube comments saying "Build a Raven, Maru," and that's how I would have said. It. That's that's how YouTube comments uh, sound when they say that. Until you're just gonna sit here and insult your own audience. Ah, they're just here for Maru. Whatever. <clears throat> like and subscribe. Oh. Hurricane thrusters on the way. Cyclone speed. So we'll be the hell clones. Lair has begun. So Cyril obviously not intent on any sort of crazy all in. I don't. So the problem is that the counter to the Cyclone Hellion is not too different. Well, if you don't have roaches, there may be a timing, and this is that timing. They get caught off guard. So Maru very well could get something done here, and he has to do so. As Zero is already at 62 drones, taking a fourth base, getting a lair. If he's not slowed down, it's going to be another game where he just takes the map and likely crushes Moru under the weight of that economy. Wings and Banes on the way. The Cyclones are revealed. The Queens retreating. And a poke and prod without the Zerglings. It's almost impossible to keep the Cyclones held in place. He's about to have speed done. But the Queens will strongly disagree with their presence. Sarah with 10 Queens right now. I know. The battle will continue. The Banelings at the back. The Queen's losing a lot of their number. But relatively cheap. Though, don't tell him I said that. The Zergling counter. There is Blue Flame on the way, but the Zerglings are headed into the third base. And there's only a couple Cyclones to defend. A bit of an unfortunate situation here. And now the Lynx and Banes. Still no Baneling speed, but just their existence. The Zerglings are looking for the wraparound. He's going with the Banelings and the Zerglings at the back! And he holds them in! And he does enough damage to knock so many of them out. But Maru is actually starting to tilt this, as the Cyclones are remarkably cost-effective, especially now that the Queens are thinned out. Baneling speed is done, but Cyclone speed is indeed there as well. Blue Flame is about to complete. Maru has a decent economy. He's at 66 to 61 workers. He actually has more workers overall as Cyril has been really strapped for larva. Without the roaches, you don't really have a larva efficient, well, I guess roaches aren't that larva efficient, but they're better than Zerglings <laughs> at dealing with this hell clone composition. So, at the end of the day, Maru has ground out quite a, oh, well, the Zerglings looking for the wraparound here and the Banelings do have that speed done now, but a great cyclone split, unable to close in. And the clones, the attack of the clones is continuing to succeed. E easily able to take out those individual banelings as well. Double armory on the way. The checkerboard depots here to funnel zerglings and banelings when they get to the other side of the map. Hellions darting in, getting a lot of damage done. Zerglings looking for the wraparound. Get the blue flame hellions, but the cyclones remain intact for the most part. Maru has 75 workers to just 60 drones. The pressure is on. Cyril. Oh, right now, Maru is mecking it happen, but Zerglings again into the third. Maru has not really left many units back, and by that, uh, he hasn't left anything at home to defend. Single Hellion that was rallied across. Maru sliding around, heading towards that southern base. The Roach Warren is exposed. He locks onto it. Gotta try to take it out. Gotta be very careful not to lose too many Hellions. Uh, 
Well, cyclones, I guess, are more important. But Roach Speed is denied immediately. Serral with a uncharacteristic mistake of putting his tech in the most exposed possible location. Maybe it was a decoy, but at the end of the... Oh, no. Both players realize that these Banelings are here. But Serral... Oh, and uses the vision blocker and slides into the Hellions as they lose vision for just a split second. And Banelings are not light units, all right? They they're just don't have very much HP, and even less since the last patch. So uh, they don't take that extra damage from the Hellions and are able to close the distance. Does Cyril have a hive done? No, he doesn't have an infestation, but he doesn't have a hive. Maru's actually in a pretty great spot. I keep looking at the worker count and it doesn't register as it's so weird for Maru to be 15 workers up. Cyril is 69, which is nice enough, but at the end of the day, that's not what you need to play this sort of lair tech style against Mech. Mech is about the strength of the unit composition, not usually having a superior supply. But Maru has managed to grind out, if not a supply lead, at least something comparable. And now he's building siege tanks, and oh no. And then the Banelings roll in! Wait. Did- who opened this up? I'm not sure which player opened up that mineral line. I don't know if it was Maru trying to expand there, or if Serral actually sent a drone across. I don't see a drone over here, but either way, 16 SCVs. And that- it seems like, uh, Maru scans the main, he sees the infestation pit timing, and he sees there's no hive. He just needs to lock this down. He's got one one done, he's building five siege tanks at a time. Yeah, he knows. If there's no vipers, there's no greater spy. Mech is, at 200 supply, nigh unbeatable for a lair tech zerg army, even Seros. It's the vipers, it's the infestors. It is those just hive tech upgrades. So Maru is putting himself in a great spot. Thirteen siege tanks. Now, of course, he can't sit back. He knows that. Eventually, Hive will be done. Eventually, the Vipers will be on the field. So he has to use this advantage while he has it. The siege tanks are working their way across. Melee attacks level two for Serral if he can ever close the distance with anything melee. Which is looking more and more difficult. Big counterattack. Gold base will be shelled. They, that counter, oh, it's an orbital at the northern base. And that means uh, Maru is forced to pull back some of his units to deal with this. Not something he wants to be doing right now. 15 SCVs down, but he's going to work the siege tanks through onto the southern side of the map. Oh, so many of those Zerglings being roasted near immediate siege tanks. Well, not so many that Cyril can't deal with it. And Maru's driven back for now. More... SCVs going down. Zerglings are slipping through, and Maru starting to make progress, but well, there's no vipers in production, just roaches and lings for, for Cyril here. Kind of desperate to get enough to attack. Maru needs to be a little careful to have anything to cover those siege tanks, as just siege tanks aren't going to do it. But here comes another dozen cyclones, uh, half a dozen hellions. And the Ravagers might be able to pick off one tank, but the tanks will return the favor. Serral struggling, but again slips the Zerglings to the north side. Maru unable to keep things together on the home front. Loses 13 more SCVs. And now the Vipers are in production. Serral, he has taken a lot of damage to his army. He's lost a lot of drones, but he has not lost a single hatchery. He's managed to keep the siege tanks off his back and his front for the most part. And so far, Maru needs to just wall this up. Not again. It just keeps happening. A single tank is not going to do it. The Zerglings get in. I Maru's going for almost an all-in sort of strat here. But the Vipers are on the field. I'm not sure exactly where the Zerglings leading that. Oh, oh, the blinding cloud! He can't do anything with those tanks. They're going to get overrun. The queens come in, and Cyril, he holds it together. The counterattacks, the queens, 
Try to get back to the tree. Run! I don't. <clears throat> the queens. Well, I'm actually going to be taken out at the end of the day. But 11 drones down. The hatcheries remain intact. Maru is not. He has not been crushed, but he's lost the critical mass of those siege tanks. He wasn't able to get the decisive fight. He isn't adding in ghosts, and he isn't adding in really any air either. Liberators, Vikings, none of it. Which means as time goes on, the Vipers and Infestors are only going to get more effect. Oh my god, look at the supply. Saril has just continued poking and prodding and dragging Maru back to his base for long enough to eventually get Hive. Maru had the initiative. He had the RB composition, but he just couldn't capitalize in time. And now, it's up to Cyril to make a mistake. Not something he's known for. The Vipers have full energy. There's no way to counteract it. He just has to eat the spell casting. If he's not able to take it, he's not going to be able to take it out. Blinding Cloud doesn't actually affect the Cyclones once they lock on, but the Abduct certainly does. 17 more SCVs down, takes out the northern base. And now Cyril, he has six going on seven bases, comes in again. The Cyclones coming up. The army supplies are still comparable. Plus three melee is about to complete for Cyril. The counter attacks. And there's an investor behind. At least he has vision of it. The scan isn't quite there. I'm not sure what he's going to do with the investor. He doesn't have neural parasite. Knocks out a few more of the tanks. 41 SCVs dead. Maru's economy has got it. Cyril, four to zero. The greatest of all time. There is no doubt in my mind anymore. Cyril, by far and away, decisively. The stage doesn't get any bigger. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in the line. Maru again gets to the goal line. And Maru again comes up short. As Cyril with a decisive, overwhelming victory. <sighs> the last game looked competitive there. But again, Cyril demonstrates how uh, far apart him and the rest of the world are and earns yet another I am Katowice championship. I won't say the victory is necessarily unexpected, but even I didn't expect such a decisive one at that. Cyril is playing better than he ever has which is saying something for someone who's been considered the best in the world for half a decade. So I don't think it matters whether or not you like it. You have to respect it. And uh, I like it as well. So hopefully you'll like this uh, video, this cast. I hope you truly enjoy. If you made it this far, thank you. Uh, I hope you uh, made your day a little bit better. And check out Patreon all that. But uh, if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for more gameplay and streams and, and good games for the fans, other RTS I've heard are out there, but that doesn't mean we're going to be doing any less. StarCraft 2. The players are only getting better. Cyril is finding new and creative ways to be more efficient. And at the end of the day, there's still plenty of good games for the fans. Thank you to ESL for putting on... Intel Extreme Masters, Katowice 2024, and congratulations yet again to the finisher. Cyril is your champion. Good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.